Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic on a blisteringly hot day here in the UK. Uh, well, OK, it might not be blisteringly hot for some of you, but uh, if you're born in England, then 65 degrees feels scorching, let me tell you. Um, now, what, what have we got on the puzzle front today? Uh, we have got the return of a setter I have a great deal of respect and a modicum of fear for. Uh, this is by Afraid Not and it's called X Cages. And uh, apparently, according to the testing reports, this is not Afraid Not's most difficult puzzle, which isn't saying a great deal. It still might be incredibly hard, uh, but we shall see. You will know from the length of the video how hard I have found it. Um, now, before I get started with the rules, it is the 1st of June, and that means it's Patreon reward time. And that means at four o'clock this afternoon, we released the Hitchhiker's Guide to the, to the galaxy sudoku hunt over on patreon do have a go at it it is a very very nice sequence of puzzles and um yeah if you do manage to finish it then send us an email at cracking the cryptic at gmail.com and we will read your name out for the first week at least we'll do shout outs for correct solvers so something to aim for and it's it really is a lovely hunt so i think you'll you'll definitely enjoy it if you give it a try um only other thing to mention is tomorrow morning I'm going to be releasing a Spartacus's setting video. Uh, this really is it's a brilliant uh, video in terms of if you want to improve your setting. I learned stuff from it. it. It really is very interesting and it deals with one of the best Sudokus we have ever solved on the channel, uh, Wheel of Arrows. So I definitely commend that to you and that'll go live probably 10 or 11 o'clock UK time tomorrow. Um, that's all I've got to tell you. So let me the, read you the rules of Afraid Not's puzzle. What have we got to do today? We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Each caged cell must be part of a region that A contains X orthogonally connected cells, where X is the digit placed in the cage cell. Uh, this is why it's called X cages. It's obviously uh, a sort of a play on X sum Sudoku. So what that means is that, I don't know, let's take this 28 here. Uh, we put a digit in here and that's going to tell us how big this region is oh i see and then the next part of the rule says the cells of the cells of which i i so we construct a region the cells of which sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the caged cell and the and the region must not contain any repeated digits and no cell may belong to more than one region. So I, I think I understand what's going on. We basically have to put a digit in here. Let's put six in just for the sake of example. And now we have to build a region. I don't know what it might look like. Let's put it like that. That's a size six region, which adds up to 28. And this region could not contain a repeated digit. And that seems to be what we have to do. Um, so. That's what we will do, or at least that's what I will try to do. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, how shall we get cracking? Well, let's try and build some regions, shall we? So that's that's got to eventually reach a size which can have cells in it that sum to 10. So it's definitely not size one, because here is a knowledge bomb from Cracking the Cryptic. The number one is not equal to the number 10. So that's got to be at least this big. The 29 has got to be at least that big. Um, oh, I've started off with blue and green today. I should really have used purple. It offends my chromatic uh, palette if I don't start with purple and green. Um, ah. I can use the secret to write a digit into the grid. Oh, well, this is good because I do like explaining the secret. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you may not even know the secret. And the secret of Sudoku is derived from the fact that we know what a complete box, a complete row or a complete column, if they're correctly filled, of a Sudoku adds up to. So imagine we filled in this box of the Sudoku with the correct digits. What would, we, what would it contain? And we wouldn't have a clue what the order is, but we do know it would contain each of the digits one to nine once each. If you add up those digits, you get 45. So how might this be important for this 43 cage? Well, this 43 cage has to be large enough that it can contain digits summing to 43. So if we make it three cells large, that won't work because nine plus eight plus seven is only 24. We're gonna to have to make it very big indeed. 
And one way to think about this is to think about what's missing. So if a nine cell cage would add to 45, this cage must be missing digits or a digit that sum to two. Well, you can't miss out two digits that sum to two because there's only one one in any complete box of a Sudoku or in the numbers one to nine. So this must be missing the digit two and it must be of size eight. And because of the X sums or the X cages rule, we can write the eight into the grid. Um, which might be important for this. I'm just wondering now because this cell has to be the size of the 10 cage. Now that can no longer be a two look because if that's a two, it's saying it's a two cell sum adding to 10 and we need an eight to accompany the two. So this, I think it can be four, which is the surprisingly irritating one because um, obviously four would be one, two, three, four. And that is possible because that does add up to 10. Um, so what do we do now? Do we know which way this 43 goes? No, I don't think we do. There's no rule about the cage being, or the cage clue being the top left hand corner of the cage here. So in fact, we can see that if you look at the bottom of the grid, it's quite clear that some of these cages, they're too big to entirely just fill the bottom row and nothing else. So they're gonna to have to rise. So these aren't like normal killer Sudoku cages where, you know, for example, at 20, this would be the upper leftmost cell of the cage. Clearly this must have take some cells above it. So we don't really know how these cages move. Um, hmm, okay, uh, so what else are we going to do? There's a duck outside. I don't know if you can hear that. It's honking sort of mockingly at me. I'm being mocked by a duck. Um, things I never thought I'd say in front of other people. Um, this 12 has got to kick out a little bit. I can I can use blue now because I've used purple already, so that's fine. Um, the seven. Oh, right. The seven is fixed. OK, here's here's a here's a digit because it can't be a one because one does not equal seven. So it's not a one. It could be a two. We'll come back to that. It can't be a three. Because if it's a three, it's a three cell region summing to seven. And the only way to make three cells sum to seven without repeating a digit is one, two and four, which doesn't work because three is not one of those digits. So this must in fact be a two and there must be a five next to it. Um, in one of those cells, I don't think we know which one. So maybe this puts pressure on the 12 clue, which has now got to be a three or a four obviously it can't be one and it can't be five because the minimum uh, cage total you could have for a five cell region would be the, the triangular number for five, one plus two plus three plus four plus five, which is 15, nori nori. Um, now I've got a three, four pair here, which interestingly doesn't affect this at all because this could never have been a four because if this was a four, the other three cells in it would have to add to 25, which is impossible. So that's a bit of, well, that's almost worth a bobbins, isn't it? Um, oh, now I see, right, this is very clever. This can't be a four. Why can't it be a four? Well, let's think about what the other three digits would be in this region if this is a four. They would have to add up to eight in three cells and they couldn't be one, three, four, because then you double the four or you duplicate the four, which we're not allowed to do. So they would have to be one, two and five. How can we how can we put one, two and five in here if this is a two, five or this is a two, five? So we can't use the five that's attached to this two. Well, we can't do it because although we could fill that square, we can't fill the next one. The next one will have to be a two or a five and it can't be. So that's rather clever, isn't it? So this square here in the corner, oh, that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, my favorite digit to see in the corner of a grid. Um, so, oh. 
hang on, there are two things I've seen now. This 10 cage has suddenly become very interesting, and this 3 cage needs two more digits that add up to 9, and that are not 4, 5, 2, 7, or 3, 6. So this is a 1 or an 8, and it must be next to another digit that's a 1 or an 8. So one of those two square. Oh, hang on, there's an 8 here. Uh, still don't think we quite know which way this, this 12 cage goes. So let's... Uh, I'm not sure. Um, let, but let's have a look at this 10 cage because this 10 cage is now useful uh, because what we've got to do is fill it with ones, twos and threes. So that it's going to have to come to at least here now, isn't it? Because it must take... Well, it's got to take four cells. So its fourth cell is here or here. But presumably if it's here, we've got a problem with the 11. Yes, here you go. If this square is the fourth square of the 10 cage, so this is now a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple, what digit do we put in there? We can't put 5 in there because the triangular number of 5 is 15, it's too high. So we're going to have to put, in fact this square has to be a 2 or a 3, thinking about it, um, and this square is definitely not purple, this square is purple, and this square will be the same as whatever this digit is, because whatever this digit is won't be able to appear in any of those three cells in the 10 cage, but will need to appear in the 10 cage, so it has to go there. Whoa! Like that. So this is 1, 2, and 3. There's definitely a 1 in this domino. Um, the 2 or the 3 will have to be in this domino in box in box 7 uh, oh hang on hang on this square is now all but well it's completely forced what are we going to put in this square if we can't put 1 2 3 or 4 in we can't put 6 7 or 8 or 9 in because again if you at the moment you go to 6 the minimum total for the cage would be 21 so this is a 5 Um, okay, so this 5 can't take this square now because it must, it must be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 quintuple and this square can be none of those digits. So in fact that's almost like a wall going down here forcing this one to come out sideways and we can use orange now, that's not too bad. Um, Right. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful setting. Now, look at these squares. Because we know these two squares are the same. Let's make them... Um, let's give them a red colouring to show that they're the same. Um, no, I don't like that. Let's give them a yellow colouring to make them... make it clear they're the same. Now, where does this digit go in the 15... in the 15 cage? And the answer is, I think it can only go in one position in the grid because this digit obviously cannot be duplicated in this box. So this cage has to get outside the box somewhere and it has to then have this digit in that position. Well, let's try. Well, it could be this square, you might think, like that. Well, that's not going to work because this square definitely sees that one through the medium of Sudoku. What about that square? Well, that's the same. If it does, if this cage comes down here in sort of a boomerang shape, you still can't put the yellow square in here It won't because it sees this one now. So it looks to me like the only place you can get the yellow digit is there. And that is, therefore, a two or a three. And more importantly, that must do that, I think. So, in fact, let's make all of those orange. I do enjoy these puzzles where you have to create the regions. Um, they, they, I don't know why, but they just do appeal to me. Now, and I see, I see what's going to happen next as well. Right, now, what are these squares? And the answer is, well, we know approximately what they are. They've got to be some combination of 1s, 2s, 3s and 4s because we know that this region in total is 1, 2, 3s, 4s and 5 and the 5 which we've already got. Now look, 
Now I've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in box four. What am I going to put in the 21 cage? Well, again, I can't use seven because the triangular number for seven is 28. It's too much. So the only valid digit I can put there is six, which means that's not a six. And now that's got to pop down here and I will make this one blue because I don't think this one can reach that one. Um, now, have we, have we learned anything useful from that? This square, well, we know that the composition of the 21 cage is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm wondering if there's something I can do with these two squares down here. I'm not sure actually. Um, those squares are seven, eight, and nine. That's obviously not eight. Ah, right, okay, this is a bit difficult to see, but these two squares can't be one, two, three, or four, because we've already got those in box one. So the question I'm asking is where do one, two, three, and four go in column two? Well, one of them can go here, therefore the other three must go there. That's a one, two, three, four, quadruple in the column. Now this square is a four because it, it can't be a three because you can't make the other two squares add up to 24 if you try that. In fact it's really very difficult to make... Oh right, this is, this is, this is just beautiful, it really is. It's not that difficult but it's elegant beauty and that is what we love on this channel because now look, now we've made a wall We've constructed a wall out of digits and cages for this 27 cage because the other three digits in the 27 cage are going to have to be adding to, well, they add up, the three digits add up to 23, so they are 6, 8, and 9. Well, we can't extend this way because we'd have to come through another cage, which we're not allowed to do, and we can't come up because these digits are not high enough. So the only way this 27 cage can move itself is, is there. It's got to take those four squares exactly and therefore these have to be six, eight, and nine and that has to be a seven and that's a nine and that's an eight. And now it looks like we've got a five, seven pair at the top of this column. Is that right? Um, which means these two squares are a six nine pair, I think. I'm not sure if we can do better than that. We can get rid of the two from that one. Um, now, what can we do next? The ducks stopped honking at me now, therefore I've overcome its mockery, it seems. Um, well done, Simon. Now, find something else. What else can we do here? We can, what can we do? This square must be part of the six. Look, the six is sort of barriered in. So it can take all five of those squares, for example, but it's still gonna have to take this square. So this, these two cages, or these, yeah, these two one cell cages sort of form a gate through which the six must pass. So the six has got to take those two squares. Therefore, this 20 cage, which must be at least three, has got to come down the bottom of the grid, look. I'm getting dangerously close to having to, but I can make those purple, that's all right. So one, two, three, four. Um, what do I need to put in this box? I haven't put in, well, one, two, three, fives and sevens. Oh, so there's a 7 in this box somewhere. Right, the 7 doesn't go in the 21 cage. There's a 7 in one of those two squares. Surely that can't be a 7. No, right, here we go. So this square might have looked like it had the opportunity to be a 7, but it doesn't because the triangular number for 7 is 28. That's way more than 20, so we can't put 7 in here. So 7 goes there. Therefore, these squares are 1, 2, 3, and 5 in some order. Now, that can't be 1 or 2. 
Ah, irritatingly, it can be three. In fact, it is three, isn't it? Because the, you know, the again, beautiful. Look at how the six, the twenty-one cage has to grow. Now this seven's blocked it off. It's got to take that square, and now it's only a size five, so it's got to take that square. And now the twenty is penned. It's penned in, so it can only be three, which means this has got to be an eight nine pair. This is a six. The three is seeing the yellow, which means all three yellows have to become a two. Those two will get rid of the flashing. We don't want too much flashing in the in Sudoku. At least I don't think we do. Um, right, they've right, they've stopped flashing. Now this. Ah, okay, so now this square look needs to take a nine for its next digit. It looks like it could be that one, but it could, I think, be this one as well. So there's a nine in one of those two cells that will complete the 11. Ah, no, this is lovely. Right, now let's return to the 43. Because the eight here is forming a barrier for the 43 cage, which has got to be of size eight. So one option before this was an eight might have been for this cage to develop in this direction but although it can start on this journey it cannot go to this square because that will repeat the eight in the region so this is basically a sort of cul-de-sac now and the eight will have to come through this little gap and once it comes through this little gap this cannot be the nine that attaches to the, the two so that's the nine and this little region is finished now the green region has to grow a bit more. Look, it's at least of size five. The red region has to grow again, which forces the green region to grow again. Um, okay, now what do we do? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six as a maximum. So we still have two more red cells at least to take over here. We've got very, very little done actually. Look at the last four columns of the grid, almost nothing filled in. This nine is fixing the nine and the eight at the bottom. This uh, region needs to have, well, there must be a four look in one of those two squares. These we know are from one, two, three, four, and five. That's not two. Oh, whoa. Okay, this two is doing some work over here. That feels a bit worrying. Have I made a mistake here? Uh, maybe I haven't actually. Maybe it was just this two came from, it was the duplicate of this square, didn't it? So maybe that's not incorrect. That's not two anymore. So two, look, in this column has to be in this domino and therefore it's definitely not over there in the in the six region or the 21 region. This three, oh, I see this three is doing work as well. Okay, we should focus more on Sudoku is. Sometimes when you're doing a Sudoku, believe it or not, Sudoku can help you as Clover was uh, amused to point out to me the other day. So this is now, a three four pair to complete the six region which is now all but done and we're actually doing okay um right this 21 that's going to have to be at least ah now that's got to be at least a, a three well it can't be three because the other two digits would add to 18 there's already a three in the box it also can't be four for the same reason can't be, so it's going to have to be at least five and it can't be greater than six. And that's going to have to come out that way. Now, what's a safe color to use? Perhaps, oh, hmm, not sure. Oh, green. Yes, that's not going to be able to get all the way up there. Right, we use green for this one. The 39 now is going to have to come upwards, isn't it? So it's going to have to come up. In fact, I think these three are now going to force sort of gradual extensions of sort of we're building towers up the grid that's going to have to do at least this initially we'll make that red actually I don't like that I'm going to make that yellow then this one can be red 
it's going to have to come up to here. That forces the yellow up again because this one's going to be at least of size 6, I suppose. I can just make it size 6 if I miss out 1, 2 and 3 from it. The 21 now has to keep growing because it's at least size 5. Oh, oh. Right, here's a sensible question. Look at the bottom row of the grid. Where does one go? One cannot go in any cage because unless that cage has a clue that's one, it won't work. So one goes there. And now we'll ask the same question about two. Where does two go? Well, we can't put two in those. It's far too small. So that must be two. And that must be eight because it must grow upwards because it can't overlap and it that's not equal to eight. So this is a little cage here now. And that forces my red one to go up, which forces my yellow one to go up, which forces my green, yes, the green, green's at least five. So it must come up again. Now this 28 has got cul de sac um, So we've cul de sac this and we should make this, oh no, I can't make it purple in case it turns that way. Maybe I'll make it grey. I've not used grey yet. What's this value? The value in here is at least 4, but can't be higher than 7. It's not 5, look. So it's 4, 6 or 7. Which doesn't look like it's that useful. Um, okay. So these two squares now are five and seven. Oh, beautiful, right. This is a five, seven pair, but we can't put five in the 39 cage because it's impossible to make five different digits add up to 39. So that's seven, that's five. Okay. Eight here means this square's a one. What did this need? This needed three, one, it needs, it needs an eight. Ah, this is nice, right. So where does the eight go to complete our 12 cage? It can't go here, look, because there's already an eight in row two. It must go there. So that turns blue. This one now, oh, this, this one either comes down or it stops. I don't think we know which actually. Um, Right, okay, so we're getting, it feels like I'm getting stuck here. <laughs> this is never a good thing. Um, that duck will be back any moment, you wait. Right, this is an eight now. That's a nine. Nine has got to live in one of those three squares. Can we do any better than that? We can. I don't want to have to do Sudoku. Do I have to do Sudoku? One, maybe, no. One's in one of these three squares. It's not going to be in the single 10 cage look. Eight is in one of two places in box six. Two is in one of two places in box two. And two is in, uh, not quite. Oh, two, what about two in box six here? Where does it go? I think it goes in one cell and that cell is in a cage of all things. Oh, that's a two. So this is a two and it needs to have an eight with it and it can't get an eight from here. Ah, oh, right, this is lovely. Right, where does this two get its eight from? It can't reach there, so it, I think it must get it from here. And that gives us another digit, which is we can make purple because purple's not interfering with anything. Our yellow region now needs to come round the corner, which forces, which actually forces the entirety of the red region, which has got to be of size five. Now I must be able to use the secret on box nine because the whole box adds to 45 and we've got 28, 38, 39, that's a six, which doesn't actually seem to get us anything, but it was quite nice to see. Um, we need Oh, where, yes, where do we put seven in this row? Sorry if that's been available for a while. It's got to go here. This is now a one-two pair. 
these squares are 3, 4, and 9 in some order, and we can get rid of 3 from that one. Nothing else. These squares are 1s, 2s, 5s, and 6s, which doesn't seem to be useful. Um, okay, I think the puzzle's getting harder now. So, what is the next step? This region looks very difficult. Oh, now I wonder... Ah, oh, no, okay. That doesn't work. Right, I was wondering whether there was... Uh, we needed to put every digit in the puzzle in a region, which I don't think it says in the rules, and that's not surprising because that one, I've just noticed, can't go in a region. It wouldn't be reached by this one or this one, which is complete, and this one, which is complete. So this seven is isolated. So you don't have to put every digit in a region. Um, so that means this one doesn't have to join the green, which is what I was hoping to say it did have to do. Um, okay. This grey region... Oh, I was hoping to prove it couldn't turn left, but I think it can turn left, actually. If that was a 4, it could very simply just go 7, 8, 9, and that would work. Uh, sorry, I'm stuck here. One sec. <laughs> Come on, find something. What on earth are we meant to look at? Um, I'm actually really not sure. What about this? This is a seven cell region adding to 39. So using the secret, it's missing two digits that sum to six. So it's either missing one and five or it's missing two and four. Right, okay, well, this is something. This square cannot be a one or a two because if it is, if this is a one, two pair, it's not possible to miss out one, five, and or two four from this cage um, and that's not going to work so this square here must be a five or a six ah which gives us a pair there which means this square is now one or two uh, which is which is useless oh dear um, so maybe we think about do we ah uh, this two look Ah, two is quite difficult to put in the yellow. But it could go here. And that would force a four into some cells around the corner here. But that looks actually possible, doesn't it? Um, what other digits do you've got to put in this cage then? You've got to put in, no matter what, you've got to put in three which, how many, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, here's something, right. So this, this, the seventh cell of the yellow region is one of two cells. It's either that one or that one, neither of which can be a three. So where does the three go in this region? It's got to be in one of those three squares, I think, which means this square is not a three, which means that, uh, means nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, no, sorry, that's not it. Right, let's try again. Um, we don't know it's got a four in. We do know, we don't know it's got a five in. Oh, we know it's got a six in it and there's a six here. Ah, but the six could go there as well. Bobbins. <laughs> um, we know it's got eights and nines in it as well. So, oh, that's it. Right. Eight. Good grief. That is not an easy step at all. Where does eight go in the yellow? I don't think it can go in any of those three squares. It sees eight here, eight here and eight there. So it's not it's not yet placed. So it must find it must place an eight in one of the last two cells, which are those two. You can't put an eight here because of this one. This is the final yellow and it is an eight. That is not easy. Um, but that surely impacts six now. Yes, where does six go in yellow? It's got to go here. Nine in yellow. 
There's got to be a 9 in yellow. It's got to be in one of those three. The same as the, th the 3. 6 me. Ah, this is a 5. Ah, that's a shame in a way. If that had been a 6, I could have extended the green. And that would have locked the grey. Um, okay. So if this has got a 2 in it, this... This would be the two, and this would be a three, four, nine, triple. And that doesn't work. Right. This, again, this is beautiful logic, but it is not easy to see. So, the question I was thinking about there is where I'm going to put a five in the row. If you make this a two, then you know there's no five in yellow, because there's no one and there's no five because we're missing two digits that add up to six and we've put a two in here. So this is a three, four, nine triple. And where are we going to put five in this uh, in this row? You can't put it here because it would repeat in the, in the green region. And that means this is not a two, it must be a one. And that's a two, and that's a two, and that's a one. And now we know that the composition of this triple is, well, we know one goes there because it can't go there because it would repeat. And this must have a five in it. So these three squares are now three, five, and nine. This is a one or a four. Um, this is not a five. Oh, bother. Okay. Um, so we get a little bit of work done there, but it's not actually broken the puzzle open. Or well, maybe it has, and you're all shouting at me, but I can't hear you. Um, by the way, thank you. I've had a lot of emails over the last two or three days from people who were worried about my sanity in light of how I deal with uh, some of the, the comments uh, on the channel, most of which, of course, are absolutely wonderful and very kind and for which I'm grateful. But it does get you down a bit when you when you see your stupidity laid stark before you. Um, and I've had a lot of nice comments and for which I'm very grateful. So thank you for that. Unfortunately, though, it's not helping me solve this puzzle. Um, hmm. Nine, nine. Oh, nine. Good grief. Right. That is probably worth shouting at me for. Nine goes there by Sudoku now. Which means these two squares are three and five, which means this square is not three, which means this square is three. Now I've got a four nine pair here. Okay, um, still, still feels tricky. <laughs> um, okay, can I do anything else here? Is there anything simple that we're missing? Probably, I hear you all shout. Uh, one, four. I'm not actually sure. I don't have a good feeling as to where to look. That's part of the problem. Maybe this column. At least we've got six digits in it. So we definitely need four sixes and nines in here. So this square is a four or a six. And this square is a four, six or nine. Okay, I don't think that's brilliant. There's definitely a six in this domino. Therefore, there's definitely a six in this domino. Threes, fives, eights, nine. Nine, perhaps? No, nine's in one of two places. Maybe there's a cage I've not I've not fully developed or not developed as much as I should have done. This one's done. This one I don't know about, do I? Ah, right, golly, golly gosh, right. If you do Sudoku on this box, you can place eight here. Now that's rather beautiful actually, because look what that's doing to this cage. This cage needs to have at least two more digits, even if it comes down as far as the gate. It's got six cells in it, so it needs two more to reach a count of eight, but it can't come there anymore because this is another gate. So the eight, so it must come there and that's blocking in this, which is making this, a, this is stunning. Fives and sevens go in the grid. Seven by Sudoku goes here. Seven, no, nearly over here. We need to put four in there as well, which unfortunately we don't seem to be able to do. Um, 
Now, what has that done? So this is now... Uh, what is this? Oh, you know what I might have been able to do? I could have done this so much easier. Oh, good grief. I just suddenly noticed that 29 is a really high number and you can't put seven in it. I could have got that ages ago. I am such a complete numpty. Right, why can't you put seven here? Well, it's because if you have a seven cell region adding to 29, you're missing two digits that sum to 16. And those two digits are seven and nine. So you can't put seven in the cage and then say it's got to be missing from the cage. You'll find yourself on the horns of a paradox. So that was easy and I just didn't see it. Ah, right. So anyway, let's carry on and imagine that didn't happen. Um, the sevens are in one of those two squares. Wow, it's still, I think I'm just being, I'm finding it particularly difficult to not spot where the next step is or might be here. Maybe you've got to look at these squares. At least I've got five of them in this row. So two sixes, sevens and nines, isn't it? Can we do anything with that? Yes, we can because nine can't go in any of them, can it? How do you not see that immediately? It's this nine here. It's locking a nine in here. Oh, but that's, that's seven. Yeah, I'm not sure whether I, I missed this for a while or whether this seven really helped me out. But the, the key thing now is that this square's a nine by Sudoku. This is a four, this is a nine. This becomes a six. That must be a nine, because it's the only place nine can go in the top row. That becomes a six. These squares are now two, six, and seven, which we might be able to improve upon if we, yeah, that's a two, just a given, because given, it can't be six and seven. So those squares we can eliminate the pencil marks from. One now, ah, oh, look at this. One must be in this domino. And therefore one is fixed in box one. We get the one and the three. Three, where does it go in box two? It goes here. And finally, we might be cooking with a bit of gas. Ah, th this little cage I've forgotten about needs a five. And look, it's got to go there now. So we better fill that cage in. We shall make this cage purple. Um, and have we now have we now finished it or is it still going to stay difficult? This square's not difficult, that's a four. That rules four out from these cells, which means the only place this square sees four, seven and nine. So that's a naked single now, that's a six. This square is now a naked single and must be nine. And these two squares have become a four, seven pair. And those three squares are a one, four, five triple, which we might be able to do something with. This square's a four or a five just from this column. That's not five because of this five. And hmm, I still haven't, I still haven't resolved the gauges. Um, What digits have we got in the 43 cage now? We've definitely got one, four, five, six, and eight. And we need to put, there's no two in it, is there? So we don't have to find a two for it. We have to find a three for it. That could be the three for it. If it's not that three, which three? Ah, there you go. Right, so where do you put three in the red? It can't pick up a three over here. This three is is not available to it and it can't find a three over there so the only place it's going to be able to get a three from is there so now we've got to a size six eight cage we need two more cells we need to put in oh bother look at that it needs sevens and nines and it can get them from two places that's not fair oh <laughs> um this is a six cage. 
Ah, right, so this is a gate. Right, look at this six gauge. We've got a gate here through which this six gauge cannot pass. So even if the six gauge took all of these four squares, which it probably can, I haven't done the maths on that, but it, even if it took all four squares, it's still got to pick up those two squares. So these three squares are definitely in the six cage, and they can be orange is the safest color, I think, to use. And that's still not doing enough to disambiguate which way this goes, because it could still come up here and be a sort of S tetromino. Oh dear. Um, um, three, no. What about this square? Is this a naked single or something like that? It, it's, it's got to be selected from three, four, five, and seven. So it's three, four, or seven. Oh, that doesn't look good actually. Three, four, or seven. Right, okay, but now how can this be six or seven? Maybe that's a good question. If this is seven, it would have to pick up the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which it can't do. The seven cells available to it are very, very high digits. It's not seven. If it's six, no, it would have to double the eight. There's no, oh no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't actually, it could do that. But that's still too many because those four together would add up to 30 which is more than 28 this is a 4 which means this is a 1 ah there we go didn't spot any of that before but now I think that that's all good stuff so that becomes a 6 that becomes a 6 and a 7 this is no longer a 4 this ah here we go this needs to have this needs to be 4 7 8 9 so that's going to have to be 7 because we know it's in the in the grey cage. It looks like it's going to go that way. Yes, because it can't come to this square, because this square can't be 7, 8, or 9. So the grey completes like that. This square, this 4 is fixing the 4 and the 3 at the bottom. This square's a 5 by Sudoku. That's a 4, that's a 1, that's a 5. And look, we're going to finish the puzzle, except that I've not done the regions yet because I don't think I've done this eight cage and I've not done this six cage and there may be other cages I've missed out as well. Um, let's just have a quick look. No, I think it's just this one which needs to, t oh, now this one needs an, a nine in it. Where does this one get a nine from now? It's got to be there. It's still got ambiguity around the blooming seven. Uh, and this one needs to be adding up to 26 and so far we've got 12 um, so we need another 14 so it's going to have to take that square because it can only pick up two more there so now we're up to 15 and we need 11 more how do we make the the those three squares we need two of them to add to 11 well clearly oh, this is why it works that finishes off this 26 and at the same time removes this seven from the availability for the red and that finishes the puzzle if that's red that is absolutely beautiful my goodness me what a puzzle that's not easy though let me click tick yes it is correct it took me ages to unwind this bit around here i don't know if that was me being slow i'm sure it was or um it was really the duck's fault i hope you agree um but i did enjoy it my goodness i enjoyed that puzzle there's so much clever logic in it there really is I mean, the start is not too bad, but I loved the way the ones, twos, threes, and fours sort of developed. And the, the, the ones, twos, threes, and fours then influenced the five, the one, two, three, four, five, which influenced the six, one, six, one, two, three, four, five, if you know what I mean. This gate was nice. And the whole start, this eight was brutal to join because it had to be part of the yellow. And then everything that went on in the middle was tricky. And I think that's because I missed some Sudoku at the top and I missed the fact that this could only be a five. Although how important that was, I'm not sure. I think it was more important that I fixed that this, this cage here couldn't come to this square and therefore had to sort of develop over and pick up this three. There's a lot to think about in that puzzle, but what I can tell you is it's constructed well, it's a masterclass in Sudoku construction, so afraid not, take a bow, 
and thank you so much for watching and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.